Okay, today we are talking about Wordle, the phenomenon that is sweeping the nation, maybe even the world, but definitely here in the US, I am talking about this game with friends, with family. We are sending our little squares and group texts. And I wanted to talk about how it actually works from a software engineering perspective. I think this is super fascinating how it all came together. And even if you're not an engineer, I think this could be an interesting discussion. So let's get into it. So yesterday I saw that Wordle sold to the New York Times for low seven figures, which for me means one to $3 million. And it's incredible. It's incredible for a lot of reasons. One, because it's very new. I think it's less than six months old. But from a technological perspective, it is only two files of code. On top of that, it's completely automated. There's no database. And so I wanted to know how it actually works. And so I'm going to get into three questions that I have that you might also have that the code can answer for us. My first question is, how does Wordle pick the daily word? My second question was, how does it determine what is in the valid word list? So you'll see sometimes if you put an answer in, maybe it's not the right answer, but it accepts it. Sometimes if you put a crazy word in or a fake word, it'll say, hey, that's not in the word list. So I wanted to figure out where does that come from? And my third question is, how does it save your guesses and the state of the game? So you may notice if you close your browser and you go back in the same day, your guesses will be saved and your past data from past games will be saved as well. How does that work? So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so our first question, how does Wordle pick the daily word? So I mentioned at the beginning that Wordle is really just two files. And if you open the console in your browser and dig around, you can actually see these files. It's just two files, one HTML file and one JavaScript file. If you dig into this file, eventually you'll see that there is an array called ls. An array is just a list of items for non-technical people. And this array is all the answers. So it's just a huge list of all the answers. So that's kind of the first half of figuring out where does the word of the day come from? But the question still remains, how is the word of the day chosen? So the first day that Wordle ever existed, which we can tell from the source code, is June 19th, 2021. So basically what happens is the code counts the number of days from then, and however many days is between now and then, is the number of the word in the list that is going to be chosen for the word of the day. So let's say there's 150 days between now and June 19th, then the 150th word in the list is going to be today's word of the day. The cool thing about this is it'll basically just keep recycling. So even after a year of words or after all the words have been used up, it'll just kind of start over again, which is really cool. It's kind of an automated way of running this game. So that's our first question. My second question was, where does the list of words that are counted as valid guesses come from? And right after the list of answers is a list of valid guesses. So I mentioned that the list of answers is called LS. The list of valid guesses is called AS. And if you do a control F and search through the code, you can see that AS comes right after LS. So basically you have this huge list of all the answers that there will ever be. And then you have a huge list of all the possible guesses that there are. And so the question I wanted to answer was, how does it work when you make a guess and the game tells you that that word is not considered a valid guess. And the answer is that it looks through this huge list of possible guesses, and if it doesn't find what you guessed, it just tells you, hey, that's not in the list, that's not valid. If it is in the list, then it checks it against the answer, and then that's where all the other functionality comes in with the green and yellow squares and graying out the keys where the letter doesn't exist in the word and all that kind of stuff. That brings us to my third question, which is, how is the state of the game and my current answers and my past performance saved in the game? And the answer to that is local storage. If you're not familiar with local storage, it's basically kind of like a database that lives in the browser is the simplest way I can think of explaining it. If you're familiar with the concept of cookies, which is basically like little pieces of information that's stored in your browser for certain websites, this is very similar. So if you open your browser when you're playing Wordle and you go to application and then local storage, you will see all of this data and where Wordle is getting this information from. And so the way that this works is the JavaScript code that is controlling the game can also reach out to this little data store and pull data as needed. So you can see it's got information in there like the board state, which are your guesses. It's got what your current turn is. It's got whether or not 
you turned hard mode on. And it's even got if the game was reset from local storage. So if you closed your browser and then came back and the game had to reset all of the data from local storage, that is also tracked. This is very cool to me and very elegant because like I said, it cuts out the need for a database and it also just saves all of the information that a user could need to play the game right there in the browser so they could close their browser and come back and still have their game. And I think that was a great solution for that particular problem and just cool to see. So that's it. That's my analysis of Wordle, or at least the parts that I was interested to know more about. I think Wordle's awesome. I was telling my wife yesterday that if you set out to build a browser-based game, it would be hard to make it go this viral, even if you were really trying to do so. I think it shows that a simple concept with some simple code can go a really long way, and that sometimes building great things just for their own sake is good enough. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment, so consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.